Arts and cultural activity can increase attention and foot traffic to an area, including attracting visitors and increasing the length of time and money they spend, not to mention bolstering the quality of life for residents of a community. A performing arts series, presenting the best music possible for the lowest prices in Polk County, is coming to various venues throughout Lakeland, Lake Wales, and Winter Haven. The series, the performers, and details are coming up on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Jeremy Moretti, and with me today is Derek Minchin, a professor at uh, Polk State. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Well, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, some performances you guys have coming up. Right, right. Um, and you could tell us a little bit about what all you're planning. Sure. So Voices of the People uh, um, is an arts organization. We specialize in presenting uh, uh, masterworks and some unsung, uh, unheralded works from the chamber music literature. Uh, chamber uh, music meaning uh, smaller in scope, smaller in design than, say, the symphonies of Brahms and Beethoven. And we're four years old uh, this year. We're, we're embarking upon our fourth season, and we bring some of the hottest young talent uh, from around the world here to Polk County. Uh, and we present sort of multi-focused or multi-faceted presentations in which we play music and we also feature some thoughts of poets and philosophers that we think complement the music. And so uh, we're doing once we begin uh, in the fall, we'll have a concert for every month of the year up until uh, April of 2016. Okay. So that's what we're doing. We're planning a bunch of diverse uh, performances. So now when you talk about the chamber music, the smaller in scale, what are, you, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the number of musicians that you have, the types of pieces that you're playing? At? Well, both, right? Be, uh, chamber music takes its name from music that was played uh, centuries ago in smaller rooms, sometimes of uh, houses uh, of, of the nobility, these chambers uh, is what they were called. So like dinner party type? Yeah, exactly. Some okay. of them were exactly. Uh, and so they are written for smaller forces. So your string quartets, right, two violins, viola and cello, your piano trios, which is piano, cello, and violin. Um, or any combination, piano quintets, bass and cello duels, there's all sorts of combos that go on there, but they're always smaller in scope than, say, um, a chamber orchestra, which may be upwards of 20 people. Mm -hmm. Chamber music is generally, you know, 10 and under, you know, okay. very generally speaking. All right. So. How did you guys get started in doing this? You've been doing it for four years. Right. Um, what were the origins uh, of your group? Wow. So in my musical life, I do a fair amount of traveling and, and concertizing, and I meet uh, and get to know wonderful players from all over the world. And chamber music very much so is uh, uh, a friend-making and uh, connection-making sort of base where you come together and great uh, uh, coalitions are formed. And so I met a lot of great people I worked with and we just vibed and loved each other's energy. And I said, hey man, wouldn't it be great if we could come together sort of on the regular, as they say it, and, and, and make some music. And literally, uh, I invented Voices of the People. Um, I had been doing solo cello concerts, uh, faculty recitals at, at Polk State since, uh, 2005 or so mm -hmm. and you know I get bored on stage doing it just by myself all the time you know just me <laughs> and a piano so I said yeah. wouldn't it be great to just have a party on stage with my friends making music and the opportunity finally came someone that one of the people that loved the success of my concerts came to me and said do you think if we were able to you know maybe find you some money could you put together a series I'm like find it and you'll see absolutely mm -hmm. And it's now history. That was uh, our first concert was November twenty eighth, two thousand twelve, and here we are, two thousand fifteen, embarking upon our, our fourth season. Uh, so literally, I have a bunch of uh, acquaintances and friends that I know, and I'm getting to meet and know even more that are fantastic artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly fantastic. And I uh, 
send out feelers to see if they're interested in doing this and to a person they've all said yes mm -hmm. uh, and so you'll see in our series that there's some you know uh, repeat offenders as they say some some people that have come to know the Polk County family and every season every year I do bring some new faces so this is our biggest uh, series our season thus far we have 11 concerts I believe it is we started with four now we've got 11 it's it's huge and so there's lots of new people coming it's going to be really really exciting doing lots of very challenging and very diverse work well what are some of the pieces that you guys are going to be playing our first concert um, in the fall September is going to be uh, called uh, a deconstruction of beauty and I'm bringing in a phenomenal pianist uh, from from uh, Pennsylvania, Dr. Carl Cranmer, and uh, the principal second violinist from the Florida Orchestra, Sarah Shellman. We're going to do a Brahms piano trio, uh, his first uh, in a series. It's in B major, and it's sumptuously gorgeous. Um, I'm going to do a piece for cello and piano called uh, Ricordanza by uh, modern composer George Rockberg. And Sarah, I believe, is going to play a sonata by Charles Ives. Um, those pieces I just mentioned couldn't be any more different. Charles Ives was an iconoclastic uh, uh, experimental musician from the early teens and uh, 20s of the uh, 20th century who just shattered all boundaries. I mean, music in different keys at the same time, different rhythms, all sorts of crazy stuff going. I love the guy, nice. but he's a little challenging for the ear. Mm -hmm. Rockberg is very tonal, very sonorous, very uh, uh, romantic in his approach. Uh, and then uh, the Brahms is a lot like uh, the, the, the Rockberg, but Brahms stands alone in the type of beauty he created. It's very organic and seems, uh, how would you say, uh, inevitable when you hear it, but only Brahms could have made it happen. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to discuss what is beauty? What is ugliness? Is there really anything that's truly ugly or could it not be seen as uh, something beautiful for a specific person? So we're going to deconstruct that. So that's that concert. There's so many. We're doing uh, a couple of bebop concerts in February, bringing in a great trumpeter uh, from New York, uh, Sean Edmonds, who's going to lead a quintet and uh, do some really wonderful stuff there. We're bringing in a pianist trained at the Royal Conservatory, um, uh, uh, Byron Sean, who's a wonderful uh, concert artist. Um, we're bringing in uh, Melissa White uh, to play uh, violin, uh, and also uh, Francisco Salazar Var on violin, and uh, Jason Amos, a wonderful violist, and myself. We're going to do uh, a sort of project called uh, Why I Am the Greatest, Beethoven and the Muhammad Ali Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> because those two individuals stood before the masses and said they were the greatest, mm -hmm. but they were. And so we're gonna find out what makes Beethoven the household name he is, why he's so great. So we're gonna do um, a, a string quartet of Beethoven. I'm still figuring out which one because I love them all. Uh, but the, for many people, in the chamber music rep, the string quartet is the most perfect way to show the chops, as they say, of the composer. And Beethoven, I won't say is the string quartet master, but he sure is one of them. Mm -hmm. And we're going to analyze uh, through a lecture demonstration one day and then a concert at the Lake Wells Art Center a couple days later. We're going to demonstrate and, 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 and share what happens in Beethoven's music to make him the genius he's touted as being. With with these different pieces, they're so different. Yeah. They're or the performances. I mean, they're they're so different, so varied in their construction. Do you have that conversation with your audience as you're going through it to kind of say, you know, here's some of this background of, you know, a lot of folks don't know, yeah. you know, some of these uh, these musicians. I've learned to do that. Mm -hmm. It's funny when when you are a performing musician and you are schooled in it, you're trained in it, and you've done it for a living for so long, you can sort of take for granted that the audience knows and understands what's happening. Mm. And not as any slight against the audience, but I have learned that it is the best thing to do to sort of bring them in and to make the, uh, the uh, concert going experience more interactive where you sort of talk with them and invite them to ask questions about what they've heard. So yeah, I've learned over many years 
to sort of engage the audience. I won't say that we did that our first year. I made it very much like a New York sort of uh, uh, chamber music experience, right? Where even they now, uh, New York musicians, have engaged the audience. But, you know, stepping back maybe 10 or 12 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, the average concert was just you come out in, in your tails and you sit down and you play and you wait for the applause, hopefully that you'll get, you know, in great measure, and then you walk off and you go to your cocktail party. The day has changed. It's time for education, it's time for enlightenment and engaging and provoking. So yeah, we have to have that dialogue and that interaction with the audience. It's very much a part of what Voices of the People is about. Well, too, and you know, we were talking before the show about, you know, some of those different crossover type, right. uh, you know, between uh, the, the different types of music that are coming in that are being played together right. that you'll do you know right. one segment the, you know the first half and then completely change it up yeah. that yeah. you know making those connections it, I think for some people one it is more engaging that yes. they're able to relate more to it but also that conversation too yes you know bringing them in to to have that understanding I think well, that's the normal. audience I find appreciates it when they think and feel very much legitimately that they're an integral part of the uh, presentation or the or or, or the, the the event that's happening, concertizing shouldn't just be about people up on stage doing their thing for the people not on stage. It should be a sort of communal uh, sort of affair, if at all possible, and when possible. Well, in a lot of the the venues that you'll be playing with, you know, Polk State at the, the different areas, it's very much a, an intimate you know, type of, of atmosphere that you can have that engagement where it's not the giant concert right. hall of New York or, exactly. you know, even in, you know, Tampa or, you know, Orlando or something like sure. that. Sure, and there again goes the, the whole chamber experience. I mean, it's wonderful playing in large halls. I've played in, in, in several with orchestras and with some chamber groups as well. But something is very magical about playing in a room the size of the studio, for example, and people are sitting right right next to you looking at you do what you do. and. Uh, partaking in it, uh, th that's very magical and, and that it has a sort of intimacy and immediacy that I think communicates very well and so we're, we are going to and have been exploring that. Um, um, uh, lots of uh, larger pieces and of course we're talking about chamber music, so larger meaning we're doing uh, a sextet, uh, Brahms sextet uh, that I can't wait to do with some fantabulous players. Uh, in, in, in the winter uh, at uh, uh, St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of, 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 of music that will be played. If I were to say that there is a highlight, I don't know which one I'd pick. I mean, yeah. the Brahms that we're doing to open the season is phenomenal. The, we're also doing a Brahms sextet. That's a phenomenal and well-known piece. Uh, I'm gonna be doing the Rachmaninoff Sonata in April in Lake Wales. That, I mean, all those pieces are, are wonderful, in, in my opinion. Uh, and there's others. Uh, when we bring Sean Edmonds down to do, uh, on one date, the, uh, something we're calling the Exploration of the Cool, and, and another day we're gonna have him do the History of Bebop, just what happens when he takes the stage and we are taken back in time to you know, the 50s uh, where uh, uh, you know, Charles Mingus and Thelonious Monk were doing their thing. It's just such a transformative occurrence that happens when these great musicians begin their craft and we launch into uh, what we're gonna offer for the evening. So there's so many big things happening this season that's really very exciting. In addition to the fact that we will be featuring uh, some students from Polk State and mm -hmm. uh, from the Harrison School that will be reading some thoughts of some, uh, uh, some intellectuals that sort of make a compliment to the music. That's very much what we mean by voices of the people. It's uh, voices of the, uh, uh, of the composers that have written the pieces that we the musicians sort of bring to life through coming together and doing that. It's the voices of philosophers that complement the works and it's voices of our own community sort of uh, uh, offering their take on what's going on. Sounds wonderful. Thanks man. Well, can't wait to hear it. I'm definitely gonna be coming out and checking that out. So. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Voices of the People is a joint effort by the Philosophy Club and Student Activities and Leadership Office, which began in 2012. Since then, it has staged numerous performances around Polk County and will continue performances throughout April 2016 at Polk State College venues in Lakeland, Winter Haven, and Lake Wales. All concerts, except in Lake Wales and Lakeland, are $5 general admission. Students with ID get in free. 
Call 863-669-2928 or go to www.polk.edu for dates, times, and performances.